Let's get underway. I want to welcome everyone to the launch of Climate West. I'm Jane Hilderman, Climate West's Executive Director. And while I get to play host today, I can assure you that behind the scenes, there have been many organizations and many people that have helped Climate West get here to this point. But before I can recognize any one person and introduce our guests, I must first acknowledge where we gather. It's evident that we uh, do not find ourselves together today. Um, COVID-19 has really changed what it means to gather. And in turn, that's added new layers to what uh, land acknowledgement means when we are spread out across so many different ancestral lands, many nations, many treaties, and many unceded territories. I'm joining you today from Treaty 1 territory, the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, OG Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. In a few moments, I will encourage each of you to also introduce yourselves in our Zoom chat box. And in addition to your name and role, I'd welcome you to acknowledge the traditional lands or treaty territories from which you join us today. And given the focus of, of Climate West and our event, um, I think it's also really vital that we acknowledge that climate change carries profound implications for Indigenous peoples and their communities in the Prairie region. Collectively, we hold the responsibility to move forwards together towards greater reconciliation and partnership, and is including and especially for the work of climate adaptation across these lands. So thank you again for joining us. I know I, we found in, at Climate West that it's not easy to launch something in COVID and requires a lot of creativity and thinking outside the box. Um, and inevitably, uh, trying to skate the needle between COVID and uh, US politics, inevitably, I've learned that our Prime Minister is also going to be addressing the media uh, at this very hour uh, that we have gone, gone live. So it goes, and all I can say is onwards. So I hope now you will introduce yourselves in our chat Zoom box. Um, we'd love to get a sense of who's with us this morning. And as those come in, I can mention just a few Zoom housekeeping items. You'll see that there are two different places to add your voice to our conversation, our chat box and our Q&A box. So please bring forward uh, your introductions and comments in the chat box and keep the Q&A box for your questions, whether they be specific to Climate West or about prairie adaptation more broadly. Uh, one of Climate West's collaborators, Joellen Perry, IISD's Director for Adaptation in Canada, will be helping tackle some of the written answers to uh, questions where possible and some other questions we hope we can get to in our um, sort of live Q&A session later in the agenda uh, where we have um, a few guests available to us. So finally, if you're having any technical difficulties today, please contact us in the chat box and we'll see what we can do to help you. And just, a, a, I guess, a favor to ask if you're a tweeter, uh, please feel free to tag climatewest underscore CA today and use the hashtag helping prairies adapt after the event. So let's get down to business. We're launching Climate West today, a new nonprofit and regional hub uh, committed to delivering credible, timely and useful climate information, data and guidance tailored to the prairie region. As you can see from our agenda slide, we have a really full uh, uh, event this morning. And I think it reflects the fact that Climate West is really a collaborative undertaking. We would not exist without the vision and support of many, including the governments of Canada, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. And Climate West has also brought together two universities and an internationally renowned think tank based in Winnipeg together to contribute to building prairie resilience under the Climate West banner. So over the next hour, we'll hear from the leaders representing those governments and, inst and institutional partners of Climate West. But first, just to give you a little bit of a deeper idea of who and what Climate West is all about, we have a uh, introductory video that was produced uh, and showcases sure. storytelling talents of the Prairie Climate Center team who created it. So cue video. The prairies are a hugely diverse region and climate affects everything we do. Agriculture, energy production, community planning. Our communities, our economy, our industries, they're adapted to a historical climate. We need to be thinking about how the climate of today is not going to be the climate of the future. 
If you're a teacher, if you're a mayor, if you're a farmer or an indigenous community trying to figure out how to make sure your community is safe, the question is, well, where do you go? Climate West is a new nonprofit that's going to be serving the prairie region. The prairies have a real climate adaptation challenge in front of them. Adaptation to climate change is a process. It's something that you will do continuously over time. A key part of adaptation is integrating climate change into decision making. We need to have our institutions, our communities, our sectors getting prepared, especially in a place like the prairies, where we know that climate risks are actually going to be higher than other parts of the country and other parts of the world. In order to adapt to a changing climate, these organizations have to know how the climate is changing. And a climate service provides that information. So we at Climate West are now the regional climate service provider. Climate West is a partnership, and there's three founding partners, the Prairie Adaptation Research Collaborative, the Prairie Climate Center, and the International Institute for Sustainable Development. We have a leading edge climate research expertise that's focused on Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba, focused on the prairies. Climate West is a partner in that practical applied journey to a more resilient future. Thank you guys. Thank you, um, Prairie Climate Center. I know that video still kind of gets my heart pumping and gives me some hope uh, with, that, with that uplifting message. And I should add that climatewest.ca actually is live today as well. So if you want to find that film again, you can check it out there. So as you heard, Climate West's mission is really ambitious to reach across sectors to support organizations from municipalities, um, to governments from First Nations to small businesses. Uh, and, um, it, and really we're trying to work together to build um, greater um, climate resilience in the region. So as last month, uh, there was a great report that came out last month from the Canadian Institute for Climate Services called um, the tip of the iceberg. And I thought it really summed up sort of the need for you know, and the context in which Climate West is launching in. Reducing emissions, to paraphrase, um, reducing emissions have, is not enough to put governments and communities in Canada on track to address climate change while building a more equitable and prosperous future. The adaptation remains a really critical missing link. So all regions in Canada have work to do on this front, but I think there's a unique need and unique opportunity in the prairies um, right now. And as Dave Sachin at Park, whom you met in the video, is fond of reminding me, um, the prairies already have one of the most sort of variable climates uh, on earth and not just in Canada, but on earth. And so while there's a long history of being resilient here, um, climate change is already sort of pushing our, our limits and whether that be, for example, whether that's more extreme and volatile. So as ever, we will need to change the way we do things, the way we build together, the way we grow things, the way we take care of each other. And um, of course, the critical question becomes how, how do we make decisions differently? So that en enter Climate West, um, that new hub for regional climate services. So climate services as a term is sort of new, so I just want to highlight that um, we draw on the experience of our three partners, PCC, PARC, and IISD. And in practice, that means that members from each team are sort of working together on different projects, which allows Climate West to take advantage of the range of skills and experience at each of those um, organizations. And at its heart, climate services are really about supporting decision-making and planning to take advantage of the best available evidence, data, and knowledge about our current and future climate in order to address climate risk and climate, climate opportunities. And I think broadly at Samara, you can say, or at Samara, at Climate West, we could say we think about this work in um, three ways. The first is what I would summarize as just data, data, data making climate information more accessible, more user-friendly, more relevant to the prairies is our, the name of our game in a way. And that means tailoring it for specific sectors and helping it be um, accessible to communities, businesses, governments, 
um, who are turning to us for trusted answers. And under this, Climate West is going to offer a help desk available via email or telephone to answer queries about climate data and climate information, what, you know, what is out there, where to find it, um, what you might uh, need it to do and how, how it can help answer your questions. Second, uh, in our sort of work, we think about, we recognize that data is not going to drive um, adaptation on its own. And so Climate West has a role to play in offering training and tools that are shaped by on the ground needs in order to help others navigate um, adaptation at all, all sort of stages and phases of that adaptation uh, cycle. We're really keen, I wanna emphasize to hear from others on this point, uh, what already works for you, where gaps are out there, how we can make resources really applicable um, in practice. So I would encourage everyone who's interested and has ideas not to hesitate to be in touch to share them with us. I think lastly, and uh, it's, it's an important point that Climate West exists um, to be sort of a public champion for climate adaptation uh, in the region and for the region. We look forward to sharing the success stories uh, from across Alberta, Saskatchewan and Manitoba more widely in the coming years. So as for introduction to Climate West, I'm going to stop there because we want to hear from others who have played a key role in bringing together the support uh, to launch Climate West. And as mentioned, we have we aren't here with just one government, we're here with four governments. And so to kick us off, I'm really pleased to welcome Terry Duguid, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change for the Government of Canada. Um, Mr. Duguid's also the Member of Parliament for Winnipeg South. And his bio is just too long and varied, I think, to fully cover here, but I'll just add that he's been a longtime advocate and educator regarding environmental sustainability and climate action. Terry. Well, thank you, uh, Jane. You can hear me all right? Yes. That's great. Uh, well, good morning, uh, everyone. And uh, like Jane, I'm joining you from Treaty One territory, the homeland of the Métis Nation. And I hope uh, during this challenging time that that everyone is uh, staying well and uh, safe. Uh, bonjour tout le monde, j'espère que vous allez bien. Uh, and let me thank uh, Jane Hilderman for inviting me to say a few words at uh, today's uh, very exciting launch of Climate uh, West, uh, the new regional climate expert organization in the prairies. Uh, climate West, uh, as you know, has been uh, two years in the making and it's a true success story of collaboration uh, on climate change uh, adaptation. And, and that's what we do on, on the prairies. As many of you know, we, uh, we collaborate uh, well. And I'd particularly like to congratulate uh, everyone involved in this achievement, the governments of Alberta, Manitoba, and Saskatchewan, uh, near and dear to my heart, the uh, Prairie Climate Center, uh, stationed at uh, the University of Winnipeg, the Prairie Adaptation Research Collaborative, the International Institute for Sustainable Development, a uh, storied organization that is located in the heart of our uh, city of Winnipeg and uh, the universities of Regina and Winnipeg. Uh, they have all been in instrumental in supporting uh, Climate uh, West. Uh, today's announcement uh, is an important step in Canada's goal of creating a national network of regional climate service hubs that provide Canadians with accessible climate data, information, tools and training. Uh, simply put, Climate West will help our communities across the prairies become more resilient in the face of a changing climate. And, and to support this uh, goal, I'm very pleased on behalf of the Government of Canada to uh, announce that uh, we've committed $1.95 million over three years to Climate West and uh, very good news indeed. Uh, the prairies, uh, I don't have to tell the folks on on uh, the Zoom today that uh, we experience climate extremes more than any other Canadian region. Six of the 10 most expensive uh, weather events in Canada in the last decade have occurred in the prairies, including the 2016 Fort McMurray wildfire and the 2013 Calgary and area flooding. And who can forget uh, the two, not one, but two one in 300 year floods uh, experienced between 2000 and. 11 and 2014, right here in Manitoba, uh, costing the Treasury uh, 
one billion dollars each and of course uh, just uh, uh, enormous uh, community suffering uh, and uh, as we experience these more extreme weather events floods droughts heat waves our communities need reliable and timely information to make sound decisions and to keep us safe and that's why climate west is so essential uh, this new organization will equip uh, prairie provinces and communities with the information they need to adapt and thrive in the face of a changing climate. And as uh, again, most of you know, adaptation is the other side of the climate action uh, nexus from, uh, from mitigation and very, very important indeed. And that's why Canada and Mexico are co-hosting an event on nature-based solutions at the Climate Adaptation Summit in just a few days. And uh, I hope if you have a moment, uh, you know, we all encourage you to, to sign up. Folks, uh, we're living through extraordinary times. Uh, the health and safety of Canadians remains the Government of Canada's top priority uh, throughout the pandemic. But once we defeat COVID-19, we will need to focus on building our communities back better and more resilient than ever before. And that's, uh, that's how we can create a safer, cleaner, and healthier future for our kids and grandkids here in the Prairie Provinces and across the country. So thank you, merci beaucoup, and uh, all the best to uh, the folks who have worked so hard to uh, bring us to this uh, very, very important day. Uh, thank you, Jane. No, thank you, Terry, uh, for your remarks and uh, the formal announcement from the Government of Canada. We appreciate your support. And I know you've been a very, your portfolio is just very busy these days. Um, I don't even think you mentioned the big announcements that were happening at the end of uh, 2020, including um, a call for a national adaptation strategy, which is really exciting. So we're grateful to have you in our own backyard um, as, a, as a supporter and champion too of uh, our new organization. So Terry, you'll be back later today. So we'll see him shortly. And next, <laughs> I'm pleased to share our, the remarks from the Honorable Sarah Gilmard, uh, Manitoba's Minister of Conservation and Climate. She's also the MLA for Fort Richmond here in Winnipeg, a role that she's held since 2016. She regrets she couldn't be here today, but shared these remarks in a video. Bonjour, hello. On behalf of the Government of Manitoba, I am pleased to congratulate Climate West on the occasion of its official launch today. It is a great privilege to be part of this very important event. I am excited about what the future will bring for Climate West and honored to know that you will be headquartered here in Manitoba. Today marks a significant milestone in our fight against climate change amidst an intersecting set of global public health and economic challenges. The creation of Climate West as a hub of climate services in the Prairie region represents an important step towards advancing climate resilience not only in Manitoba, but across the prairies. La création de Climate West en tant que plaque tournante des services climatologiques dans la région des prairies représente une étape importante pour faire progresser la résilience climatique, non seulement au Manitoba, mais également à travers les prairies. Hard work by many over the past few years has come to fruition. Climate change remains the defining environmental challenge of our time. The Prairie region, the rest of Canada, and the whole world are now experiencing the impacts of a changing climate. Over recent decades, we have witnessed extreme events such as flooding, drought, heat waves, and winter storms that have adversely impacted many communities in the prairies. The cost of these climate events is growing and is anticipated to rise over the coming years with increased climate change. As regional hub of climate services, Climate West plays an important role in making timely, accurate and relevant climate information available and accessible to governments, businesses and communities across the region. These services will help enhance shared understanding of current vulnerabilities, risks and opportunities that will enable robust adaptive planning and decision making. This is why my government is proud to support this innovative and collaborative undertaking in partnership with Environment and Climate Change Canada and the governments of Alberta and Saskatchewan. As well, the government of Manitoba appreciates the efforts of the founding organizations instrumental in forming Climate West, the International Institute for Sustainable Development, 
the University of Winnipeg's Prairie Climate Center, and the University of Regina's Prairie Adaptation Research Collaborative. Investing in actionable climate data and information reflects the Government of Manitoba's commitment to develop a robust, evidence-based adaptation planning and risk management in the province and across the prairies. Manitoba's vision is to be Canada's cleanest, greenest, and most climate resilient province. Our plan adopts an holistic and integrated approach to protecting water, conserving natural resources, addressing climate change, and strengthening our local economy. The mandate of Climate West aligns well with our climate and green plan, forging a strong partnership with the federal and prairie provincial governments and other sectors is essential to broadening policy discussions, sharing knowledge, and leveraging critical resources to advance climate re resiliency within the prairie region. Our collective investments will catalyze collaboration among experts, researchers, and practitioners to provide cutting edge climate services to meet the needs of economic sectors and communities. An integrated and coordinated approach to climate service delivery through research, training, and outreach will help enhance infrastructure, community, and ecosystem resilience to climate change at different scales. In closing, I would like to thank Climate West and our partners, and I wish you every success in your important work going forward. Congratulations, and welcome to Manitoba. Félicitations et bienvenue au Manitoba. Well, thank you. Thank you to the government of Manitoba for um, those remarks. And we are looking forward to working with you on advancing the Manitoba's climate and green plan. We're grateful for their funding commitment to Climate West as well. So following on Minister uh, Gilmard, I'm pleased to introduce the Honorable Warren Kading, Minister of Environment for the government of uh, Saskatchewan. Uh, he is, he was elected in 2016 as the MLA for the riding of Melville salt coats and um, has held since as took up the environmental portfolio following Saskatchewan's just recent fall election, having previously served as Minister of Government Relations, Minister of First Nations, Métis and Northern Affairs, Minister responsible for rural and remote health, as well as Minister responsible for seniors. Um, he also sent his remarks from, vi for vi from video. Hello everyone, I'm Warren Kading, Minister of the Environment for Saskatchewan. It's a pleasure to join you for the official launch of Climate West today. I think it's fair to say that we're all concerned about the future, the impacts of climate change on our environment and our communities. Clearly, there is a lot going on in today's world, but in Saskatchewan, we are still looking to the future. Building resilience to the impacts of climate change is really a fundamental component of Saskatchewan's Prairie Resilience Climate Change Strategy. The ability to cope with, adapt to, and recover from stress is at the forefront. Our approach to climate change is multifaceted. It is about protecting people and communities while working to reduce emissions in the province. We recognize that even if we could slash our provincial emissions to zero by tomorrow, that the global climate will still continue to change. This is something much bigger than any one jurisdiction. Our province is actively working to reduce emissions in an economically sound manner while better preparing our communities, industry, and people for a changing climate. In 2018, we released our first climate resilience measurement framework, a commitment in the Prairie Resilience Strategy to report on the annual progress in the province. This framework is being used to measure how resilient Saskatchewan is to the effects of a changing climate and establishes long-term targets in a number of key areas including the ability of our natural systems, physical infrastructure and economy to thrive in a changing environment and a low carbon economy. It also focuses on community preparedness and the well-being of people, two key priorities for future planning. This year, Saskatchewan released an amended Statements of Provincial Interest, which provides guidance for municipal land use planning and development. The new regulations include guidance on how communities can incorporate climate resilience when planning for public safety and public works. Saskatchewan looks forward to collaborating with our regional partners through Climate West and the informational insight that they'll be able to provide. Together, we can build resiliency to allow us to strengthen our ability to anticipate climate risks in the prairies. Thank you. 
And thank you, uh, Minister Kading, for those remarks that were shared with us. And we're going to hear a little bit more from the government of Saskatchewan, with a represented by a Dr. Barbara Kishchuk, uh, who's the director of Cumulative Impacts and Science Branch of the government of Saskatchewan during our panel discussion. So stay tuned. I also want to just take this moment to recognize that the government of Alberta has also played an absolutely uh, critical role to alongside um, of the other governments and sort of helping support Climate West and get off the ground. Um, we just, yeah, we are very grateful with that without them, it would, this Climate West would not be um, prairie wide. So thank you. Um, let us return to Manitoba then, and specifically the University of Winnipeg, uh, home to our partner, the Prairie Climate Center. Uh, Dr. Curry, the current interim uh, president and vice chancellor also shared his remarks uh, with, with us today by video. Greetings from Treaty 1 territory in the heart of the Métis Nation. I'm Dr. James Curry, Interim President and Vice Chancellor at the University of Winnipeg. These lands that make up the Prairie Provinces are particularly vulnerable to climate change. Given the interior continental climate of the prairies, they're anticipated to warm up faster and more intensely than many other areas of the country in the coming decades. The Prairie Climate Centre, based at the University of Winnipeg, is a national leader on understanding and communicating the climate risks facing Canada. They're making critical contributions to moving society from risk to resilience, as their motto goes. The PCC developed the Climate Atlas of Canada, which is one of the country's main online and interactive platforms to access and interpret how climate change will affect our country. The Climate Atlas is being used for applied planning by cities, municipalities, and businesses, and is an excellent example of how universities meaningfully translate knowledge into action. The team at the PCC has also developed participatory documentary videos from coast to coast to coast which demonstrate how climate change is affecting communities and how people and institutions are successfully adapting to these changes. These knowledge mobilization efforts demonstrate that real world change to increase the resilience of our society is indeed possible. However, given the serious challenges climate change presents for the prairies, country and planet, Partnerships to leverage our collective expertise and capacity are crucial. Simply put, we're stronger together. This is why I'm so excited that the University of Winnipeg, University of Regina, and International Institute for Sustainable Development have collaborated to establish Climate West. Climate West is an innovative partnership supported by and bridging the Prairie Provinces and Federal Government, which will ensure that our region has high quality climate services to address the challenges while creating opportunities and prosperity in an era of climate change. I give my deepest thanks to all the partners for their contributions that have made Climate West a reality. On behalf of the University of Winnipeg, we look forward to working with you. Back. Uh, thank you, Dr. Curry, for your message and sort of the extra insight, I think, into the work of the Prairie Climate Center and it's specifically its Climate Atlas, which is a fantastic tool that we're so thrilled at Climate West to be able to build on and help, I think, boost the uptake of in decision making and planning across the region. So uh, we'll cross back over the Manitoba Saskatchewan border once more and now hear from the interim president and vice chancellor of uh, the University of Regina, home to Park, one of our partners. Good morning, my name is Dr. Thomas Chase and I'm interim president and vice chancellor of the University of Regina. We're proud that our university is located in Treaty 4 territory with a presence in Treaty 6. It is a pleasure to be part of the launch of Climate West. 
On behalf of the University of Regina, I am honored to share how committed we are to building a better future through innovative research and inspiring scholarship. By identifying environment and climate action as one of the five key areas in our strategic plan, we have set an institutional goal of reducing our ecological footprint by 25% by the year 2025. In so doing, we've made a strong institutional commitment to address one of humanity's most pressing needs. The University has been fortunate to have the Prairie Adaptation Research Collaborative, or PARC for short, call our campus home for 20 years. We are proud of the work led by Dr. Dave Sachin and his team, work that has established the University of Regina as a leader in climate change research and its application in public policy, business decisions, and community development. One example of this on-the-ground impact is PARC's recent work with the Saskatchewan Water Security Agency to enhance the capacity of agricultural producers across the province to cope with climate change. By incorporating climate change adaptations and strategies into the design and development of agricultural drainage infrastructure, Saskatchewan's farmers and communities benefit from innovative water management practices. Park's research and leadership continue to highlight our university's commitment to better understanding and adapting to climate change. To continue that commitment, we are excited to be a founding partner of Climate West alongside the University of Winnipeg and the International Institute for Sustainable Development. Through this new partnership, the University of Regina will help build a multi-institution, multi-government collaboration for the meaningful application of research from our university. Park's experience and expertise will help Climate West build climate resilience across the Prairie Provinces and spur demand for climate services in the region. Together with Park, the University is excited to help generate new job opportunities and training to meet such demand. On behalf of the University of Regina, I commend all those whose hard work has helped to make today possible, including Environment and Climate Change Canada, the governments of Saskatchewan, Manitoba and Alberta, and all the founding partners. I'm delighted to celebrate the new Climate West collaboration, and I further affirm our university's commitment to environment and climate action. Thank you, Dr. Chase at the University of Regina. And uh, I guess I'd like to add congratulations to Park for over 20 years of operations um, that, that have made it a true trailblazer on the field of climate adaptation research on the prairies. Um, we're really fortunate to have Dave Sachin and his team part of uh, the network. Um, I know he was very busy last month along with the team of co-authors on the release of the Prairie chapter of the National Assessment Project for which he was lead author. Um, that report is a sort of a wonderful sort of state of uh, thinking and understanding around climate impacts and sort of adaptation on the prairies and is available um, from the Government of Canada's website. So if you haven't seen that report yet, it's, it's a very important reference tool, certainly for Climate West and others in this, in this space. So we have one more speaker, um, Dr. Richard Florizone, uh, uh, who is the President and CEO of um, IISD. Joining us this morning, um, Dr. Florizone joined ISD in 2019, I believe. Uh, from the universe from Dalhousie University in Halifax, where he was uh, the president and vice chancellor there. His background is in engineering. He holds a PhD in physics. Kind of cool. So Richard, over to you. Thanks, Jane, and congrats. Uh, well, I don't know that you saved best for last, but here goes. Thanks, and congrats to everyone here. Uh, MP Do Good, Terry, uh, thank you for your support, uh, not just for Climate West, but really your tireless work uh, for sustainability issues, especially water, uh, the important work you're doing there. It's been great to get to know you, work so closely with you over the past year, and to all our speakers. I think today's announcement for me, I suppose, has a special resonance because, of course, ISD is proudly headquartered with Prairies in Winnipeg, um, but I'm a Prairie boy myself originally from Prince Albert Saskatchewan uh, and so it's great to see this work happen at a time when nations are increasingly turning their attention not just to mitigation and preventing climate change but adaptation to prepare and protect our communities from the change that we know is coming uh, in fact the government of Canada talked about uh, is is talking about developing a national adaptation strategy that was announced in December uh, so uh, you know this is important and very timely work and so of course I'm very pleased to be here 
um, and proud to be here for the launch of Climate West. Um, you know, as you heard from Terry, we know that climate change is real and we know that a known impact of that change is an increase in the number and the severity of extreme weather events. Um, and that's being felt right here on the prairies. Again, uh, to quote Terry, right, he talked about six of the 10 uh, most expensive extreme related events were right on the prairies. Um, so as we look at those changes that are happening and hitting us right here at home, it's clear that there's an urgent need to prepare and protect uh, our prairie communities um, from the changes that are ahead. And that means equipping them with the information and training that's needed uh, to ensure the long-term sustainability, not, of just, not just of the prairie's landscape, but also of our communities. So I'm so proud that ISD is part of this dedicated team. I think Climate West is just ready and raring, especially with Jane's leadership, uh, to step up to the challenge to provide those resources and, and meet that need. A little bit on ISD's piece of the puzzle here. Um, we have been actively working uh, on the topic uh, of adaptation and helping communities to prepare and protect themselves uh, from coming climate change for over 20 years. And we've been doing that work both in Canada and abroad. Um, and so this collaboration, of course, is a natural for ISD. It allows us to build on, on that existing work and bring some of that expertise to the prairies. Internationally, we run something called the NAP Global Network, the National Adaptation Planning Global Network, where we're directly helping over 40 developing countries uh, develop their own adaptation plan and so that's work that we can bring to bear here on the prairies. But of course, on the prairies, we've been active for a couple of decades, uh, building a community of adaptation practitioners, for example, on, on the prairies through uh, adaptation practitioners, rather, through our role uh, on the Secretariat of the Prairies Regional Adaptation Collaborative. And that, of course, is a federal provincial uh, initiative that brings together the three prairie provinces with Natural Resources Canada. Uh, to advance adaptation planning all across the prairies. We also work to track climate change through our long-term monitoring at ISC's experimental lakes area. And that work uh, now has gone on for over 50 years. And it's not just um, uh, measuring the effects of climate change, but also now advancing the science and solutions to address threats to Canada's freshwater. And then in Canada and abroad, we're also promoting the role of nature in providing real solutions to improve uh, climate resiliency. And that's work that we're doing, um, not just in our Canadian offices, but, uh, but also in our, in our office in Geneva on uh, international work on nature-based solutions. So, you know, we're very excited to support this work on the prairies uh, by playing this role in the creation of Climate West. Um, as you've heard, it'll be a regional hub for climate services. And to do that alongside our founding partners, the Prairie Climate Center and the Prairie Adaptation Research Collaborative. Uh, I don't need to describe the role. I think, Jane, you described that so well, the three things that we're going to do. Um, you know, understanding how those climate related risks are changing on the prairies. Uh, two, understanding the implications of those changes on the mandates and operations uh, for both the private and public sector. And three, then supporting the efforts, uh, really equipping our partners uh, to increase their climate resilience. So I just want to close by thanking everyone. Of course, our founding partners, uh, the Prairie Climate Center at the University of Winnipeg, the Prairie Adaptation Research Center at the University of Regina, the governments of Manitoba, Alberta, and Saskatchewan, and of course, the government of Canada represented by you, Terry, through Environment and Climate Change Canada. Um, thank you all for your partnership and support. We look forward to working with all of you and folks on this call uh, to better prepare and protect the prairies and prairie communities for climate change. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Richard, for those remarks and sort of spontaneity too to sort of bring us bring us home. I know next up on our agenda is a panel discussion, but I'm just I'm monitoring our, our Q and A box, and I know um, thematically, kind of two questions have come up uh, that focus on Climate West work with First Nations and advancing a, a climate adaptation in those communities. And so I'm just going to deviate for a second from our our planned agenda and invite one of our, our Climate West collaborators, uh, Dr. Ian Morrow at PCC, perhaps to turn on his video. I think he has that capability. Um, and, and in part because um, I want to, you know, the, the kind of model of Climate West is I, I get the, the, the wonderful position of standing on the shoulders of, of the work that's been done by PCC Park and IASD. And I know PCC has done um, a considerable amount of, of 
engagement uh, and, and sort of thinking about what adaptation uh, working with First Nations means and looks like. So I'd, Ian, I'd wonder if you might just speak a little bit more about how um, this work should take place and the role of incorporating knowledges into climate adaptation work. Sure, thanks, Jane. Uh, it's great to be here and thank you to all the panelists and everyone who has made Climate West possible today. It's been a lot of hard work getting here and so it's exciting to launch. Uh, with respect to partnerships, you know, there's partners on this call and there's partners that have kind of founded the organization, but these networks of relationships extend much deeper and further uh, into the lands and territories that, that we live and work on uh, respectfully and, and honoring, you know, the history of colonization, honoring the complex relationships uh, that, that play out in the prairie region and you know, at the Prairie Climate Center, I can say we've, we've worked very hard to position ourselves in a way that doesn't just look at the science of climate change, but looks at other ways of knowing and other ways of understanding environmental change in the land. And personally, I've learned a tremendous amount of things from Indigenous communities around what it means to be in relationship with the earth and to uh, think about change on larger timescales than science has even understood, you know, thousands of years, millennia, the knowledge exists in these lands from Indigenous communities uh, to help guide the process and guide Climate West. And certainly at the Prairie Climate Centre, we take that guidance very seriously. Uh, we work very closely with groups like the Turtle Lodge, Elder Dave Kershane. Uh, we're deeply involved in many projects around climate adaptation. Um, specifically looking at uh, Indigenous ways of understanding the world and training and climate readiness. Um, there's many, many relationships. And, and for me, it's all about that relationality. It's about knowing where you stand. And I think Climate West needs to be humble by that because we don't have all the answers. We have some expertise, but it's going to take a lot more expertise and more than just science to get us to where we need to be. And so on that note, I think you'll see more about these relationships, more about this research and, and, and different kinds of faces and different kinds of voices moving forward. So thanks for the opportunity to, to speak and, and uh, hope everyone's doing well. Um, thanks. Thank you, Ian, um, for, for sort of jumping in and sort of sharing a little bit about that. I think it's fair to say when we talk about climate data, um, to be reminded that it can be defined very broadly and, um, and ways of knowing uh, contribute to, um, uh, 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 sort of vitally contribute to uh, climate data uh, defined in that way. So um, I hope that helps sort of address one of those questions that came up. We are moving to our Q&A and thus a chance to ask more questions, uh, especially to more broadly about climate adaptation in the prairies. I want to bring back uh, Dr. Richard Florizone, uh, Terry Duguid, and uh, add a third voice to the conversation, Dr. Barbara uh, Kischuk from the Government of Saskatchewan, whom I mentioned uh, as the Director of their uh, Cumulative Impacts and Science Branch, the Government of Saskatchewan. Um, thank you for, for joining us. And, you know, it's really kind of interesting because we have such like different vantage points on sort of the question of climate adaptation here. Um, I think there's some consensus, I imagine, but I, I'm curious to try to tease out, you know, given um, the experiences of ISD working internationally and, and uh, internationally and nationally as an NGO and the government of Canada's role, um, and then a provincial government trying to also really think about what adaptation means on the ground um, to talk a little bit more about what our, our adaptation priorities should be for the prairies. Sitting back at Climate West, I know we have a very, very broad mandate and so it can kind of feel a little overwhelming sometimes to think about where do we get started? How do we start thinking through what is sort of uh, needs to get done top of mind? And so uh, I guess I want, I was hoping we could each kind of I hear from our guests uh, on that topic, you know, what, what, what are the priorities in your view for the region? And I thought maybe um, since we haven't heard yet from Barbara to give her the chance to kick us off. Thanks, Jane. Uh, first of all, thanks, uh, thanks and congratulations on the launch today. It's uh, great to see this realized and the Saskatchewan Ministry of Environment uh, 
has been really pleased to be involved in the development and we look forward uh, to working together going forward. Um, in terms of the priorities, I think to start with that, I'm gonna go back a little bit um, along the trajectory. Um, climate science and climate research didn't always have the profile uh, that it has now. And so there's been a lot of foresight and a lot of commitment um, in putting the foundational pieces together by um, the founding partners um, who you mentioned and, and many others who are on this call. Um, so I think in terms of prioritization, I think where we're going is into the, some of the more integrated approaches we're seeing now, uh, climate resilience, nature-based solutions, uh, which are still gonna draw on that core uh, data and core um, information observations on changes. Um, I, I, I'm a little hesitant to sort of identify one area because it, it runs the risk of uh, oversight, you know, for some of the other areas. And I, I think I would just say going forward, keep doing what we're doing um, in terms of more integrated approaches, but drawing on that very foundational data um, that, that many have invested um, in making those contributions towards. Um, a, a, a broad answer for, I know, a broad question. Um, maybe I'll, I'll go back to Terry uh, and your work, given you've, you've been thinking about this space for a long time and, and you've been really involved in a lot of conversations as of late. I, I know the Water Security Agency is just one of them. So where, where do you see the prairies needing to focus on, especially, say, for the next, uh, the next decade? Well, uh, since you mentioned water, um, uh, which is an area that I'm uh, I'm, I'm working on on behalf of uh, the government of Canada um, and uh, specifically Minister Wilkinson, who I'm representing uh, today. Uh, so we're in the throes of creating a, a new Canada Water Agency, and it was very much inspired by the Prairie Farm Rehabilitation uh, Agency, which. Uh, Actually saved the prairies from uh, from the from the drought from the dust bowl of the of the dirty 30s, uh, almost a hundred uh, years ago. So it has inspired us to uh, to create this new institution, and uh, uh, I am I am very sure that uh, climate change adaptation and water management will will figure prominently. And um, something that my Manitoba colleagues and I, uh, and uh, we don't have representatives uh, in Saskatchewan and Alberta, uh, so, uh, but our, our prairie reps uh, here in Manitoba are, have been very focused on a prairie water strategy. And I mentioned the, the two one in 300 year floods, which cost our economy a uh, billion dollars each, uh, 7,000 refugees, mostly from uh, First Nations uh, uh, communities, uh, the Calgary flood uh, that uh, I mentioned in, in my remarks. Uh, and if we are going to exp expand our agricultural uh, footprint, as the, uh, the minister from Saskatchewan said, we need to get a better handle on water. We are getting whipsawed uh, between floods and drought. And, and so we need to store water when it's plentiful and we need to release it when it's uh, not plentiful. And um, so one of the things that uh, the Manitoba caucus and we on the prairies have been uh, emphasizing is a, a prairie water strategy. Uh, the central th thrust, uh, which will be uh, climate change adaptation. So uh, that's a major focus for us uh, on, on the prairies. Brilliant. I'm glad you've highlighted the role of water, um, which you're right, is, is heavily sort of, I think, shaping our, our early thinking at, at Climate West in terms of areas to focus on. And we have some great hydrology expertise on our uh, teams. Uh, or partners uh, teams. Richard, can you maybe, do you want to build on this and take us, or take us in a different direction? Yeah, thanks, Jane. No, actually, I'll build on it entirely because I think I think my thoughts on this are are very consistent with uh, Barbara and and Terry's comments. You know, when you think about where to focus, you want to focus on the areas uh, you know that are the most important, but also that where you have the greatest opportunity for impact, um, where you see potential for partners and make a difference. And so, I'd really encourage you to think about you know kind of three intersecting issues. Um, 
water, nature, and partnership, particularly with indigenous communities. So water, I mean, Terry's already expressed this very, expressed this very well, that, that water, you know, is a defining issue for the prairies. It always has been. I mean, it was when I was growing up, whether it had to do with floods or droughts, right? Um, and so um, you're seeing an increased attention to water issues. So I think not only is it important to the prairies, but you're seeing, you know, an interest on the parts of governments uh, and private sector partners in the importance of water. So I think that is a, that is a great place to focus. I'm going to add nature because um, there's a lot, and it's a bit of a, a buzzword in my field, uh, in the field of sustainable development, people talk about nature-based solutions, which is basically a way of saying, you know, how can you use nature and better leverage nature and invest in nature to deal with some of these impacts. And there's a lot of, a lot of great work happening there um, um, that is, that has quite spectacular returns, both for the environment and I will say uh, economically. So that's why you see governments interested in things like tree planting, uh, wetland restoration around the world, think, investing in things like mangrove, uh, you know, to mangroves to kind of uh, protect against flooding. Um, we've done work across the prairies at ISD over the years that have shown, has shown uh, particularly around water where you can use natural solutions um, managing, um, say, runoff in the spring using quite simple interventions that have remarkable financial and, and environmental returns. This is an area that, again, is, a, is, is of increased interest in Canada for a good reason. It's, it's being looked at increasingly internationally. And so I think, I think if Climate West were to focus on water with a specific kind of looking at what are natural interventions we can make around management of water, that strikes me as a very rich area. And then finally, picking up on Barbara's point, uh, and and uh, our other speakers, um, you know, is looking for partnership, particularly with indigenous, indigenous peoples. Look, these problems of dealing with climate are too big for any one organization or university or even country often to tackle alone. And so we need partners. We need to we need to bring in partners to we know that well as think tanks right we we have good ideas but if we want stuff to happen we need partners um, and with indigenous communities you know I'm always I'm always reminded of a of a phrase uh, that Marie Sinclair uh, uh, once shared with me which was nothing nothing about us without us right so it's about finding topics that the indigenous communities aren't just engaged uh, or consulted on but are true partners in that are true priorities for them. Um, and similarly, uh, you know, trying to find common ground with the private sector, with municipalities that are often dealing with these issues uh, are right on the front lines of it. So that's some broad, uh, broad direction, Jane. I'm sorry we don't have an exact recipe for you, uh, but we'll trust on you as our new exec director. Uh, but I would say that those three areas would be a rich, a rich three, three rich threads to mine or, or veins to mine, if you would, around water, around nature-based solutions and around partnerships um, with uh, indigenous and other, other sectors of society. Um, uh... Thank you for that. And I, I guess I, I maybe want to probe a little deeper in some ways and, and build on some of the Q&As that have come in. Um, Barb, one of the areas like you mentioned, um, uh, the role of data and data integration of data and working in a more integrated way. And one and someone else has asked this question, but I think it's good to sort of ask, like probe to say, what you know, what does that mean in your mind? And like, how do we, um, yeah, what, and if there's something specific to maybe about the data challenge or data gap we face on the prairies. So um, <clears throat> I think the, the, the point I was sort of uh, getting at there was to not lose sight of the need for that core data. Uh, you know, I, I, I think we can provide more data in any of these areas. So the, as I said, you know, in the early time of climate, climate science, uh, people focused on air, water, land, you know, and we still need that information. Um, I would add biodiversity to that. I would add the human side to that. Um, you know, we're never going to have too much data in this area. Um, I think the support for that, but also recognizing as uh, Dr. Morrow said, and this comes from different sources. And um, even though we have some newer frameworks, um, that doesn't mean we can step away from investing um, in the collection of core empirical data, what is response data, 
what is resilience data, what, what do those trends look like, and then integrating that into policy and into our day-to-day -day normal operational lives as, as land managers, as resource managers, um, whatever it is that we're applying that to. Um, this, nothing has changed in the need for data. Um, we have different uh, perhaps methods and degrees of sophistication in terms of certain data, um, but it's all a, a, forward, a forward movement on the data front. I'm delighted given, uh, you know, Climate West has a big role to play in trying to bring together data and, and it, where it doesn't exist, help generate it. So I'm glad to hear that there's always gonna be a need for more of that. Um, Terry and Richard, I think, you know, you've laid out some great kind of ideas and, and you've been working in this space. And so I've kind of wanted to maybe just follow up on the question of what challenges um, are like should be anticipated. I know you've like I think about you, Terry, who have had lots of conversations. Like what sometimes what stops us from getting traction that we need on adaptation? Uh, well, I guess uh, I'll I'll start. Uh, Barbara just mentioned uh, data, and uh, again, I'm I'm a little uh, possessed with the water file right now, but. Uh, you know, we we collect it in 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 different ways. Some data is uh, is is sitting in a file folder uh, in a in a in, in a filing cabinet. Uh, some is on a floppy disk. Uh, it's just really all over the place. So we need to um, uh, get to a place where our data is what they what they call interoperable, and so that we can share it. And when you're talking about something like a prairie watershed where there's an upstream and a downstream, uh, we need to know what's uh, going on, particularly we in Manitoba, because uh, we're, we're at the end of the pipe, uh, so to speak, in terms of nutrient management, in terms of, uh, uh, of water flow. So data is very, very important. And I know your organization is going to going to play uh, an important role. And, uh, you know, the um, involvement of Indigenous peoples has come up uh, several times in the conversation already. There are some wonderful examples out there of, uh, uh, of uh, Indigenous peoples finally being at uh, the table and con contributing mightily uh, with traditional knowledge, but just and with knowledge of, of their uh, particular territories. I would note the, the collaborative leadership initiative funded under the Lake Winnipeg program. There are 18 municipalities and 11 Indigenous governments. Uh, these folks had not talked to one another in 153 years, and now they're looking at uh, natural solutions that uh, will help reduce nutrients going into Lake Winnipeg, but also uh, to, uh, to achieve uh, some of not only our climate change adaptation goals, but uh, our, uh, our, our mitigation uh, goals as well. Indigenous peoples have not been at the table when it comes to water management. We think of Shoal Lake, where uh, they boil their drinking water while we pipe it in uh, to, to Winnipeg and treat it here. Uh, you know, it, just a, a tragic and terribly unfair situation for over a, a hundred years. Uh, and uh, our hydro development in the north with huge impacts to Indigenous communities. So Indigenous communities will be uh, very, very included in our, our discussions uh, of a Canada Water Agency and better managing our water resources for this generation and future generations. Thanks, Terry. Um, I think you, I like how you turned my question around into sort of like what we need to do. Um, Richard, do you want to, I realize we're coming, by the way, close to the end of our time together, it flies, I know, um, but on that topic of maybe, I'll, I'll, instead of challenges, I'll say the advice that uh, you need, you would give to Climate West to, to succeed in this space. I know you talked about collaboration and partnership, but if there's uh, more on that front, um, please, please add to it. Maybe a very just a brief intervention. What I'll say is one of the continuing challenges and opportunities is still around communication, and we see that. And and uh, public leaders talk to us about that. That of course we're getting greater support publicly for climate, but now you get into mitigation and adaptation, and it's kind of tough to explain the story. Uh, one thing I'd say to wrap it all up is I think if we continue to keep 
people front and center, that this is about preparing and protecting Canadians and, and prairie communities, that that I think helps with your first question around priorities. It helps us kind of sort through, you know, what is it that matters most to people? Um, but then, and to those communities, but then it also helps with communication because if we focus on those areas, we're meeting people where they are, we're finding things that, that make a real difference to communities. And that's a great path forward. I think Climate West is really well positioned with its partners um, and under your very capable leadership, Jane, um, uh, we're just so thrilled to have this launch today and, and uh, thank you for being part of it. And, uh, and thank you to all of our partners again uh, for being part of it and setting us off on this journey. Um, thanks, Richard. And you did bring it home lovely and tie, put, put a little bit of a bow on it. Um, I, real, I, I can't believe we, we are coming to the end of our sort of hour together. Uh, and thus, I want to just thank Richard and, and Barbara and Terry for coming back and sort of having a bit more of a, a live exchange to, to add uh, sort of insights to our conversation as we launch. Um, and I, and I guess we have one last trick up our sleeves too, just to give you a sense that I am definitely not a one woman show. Uh, there are, I get to work with um, a wonderful management team comprised of different people from uh, each of ISD, PARC and PCC. And so I'm going to say Richard and Terry and Barbara, you're welcome to, uh, to, to wave farewell and, and turn off your cameras. And I'm gonna invite all my colleagues on the management team to turn on their cameras and uh, say a hello uh, very briefly to our audience. Hello from I Park. See, I see Dave at Park and John Belanger, his uh, research manager, Ian Morrow, and colleagues, Christy Allen, Taylor Livingston, and Matt Loxley. Um, and at uh, ISD, there's Joellen Perry, whom I introduced earlier, as well as Tyler Farrow and Cameron Hunter. And I should add a big shout out to um, Catherine Burge and uh, Julia Donaldson, who've been supporting from the comm side at ISD, which I just would not, have, we, this event would not have won a smoothie as uh, at, without, their, without their support. So thank you. And these are the folks that are, you'll hear a lot more from in the coming days. So to bring us home and wrap us up, um, I'm delighted that so many of you made time to stop by and learn a little bit more about us. And if I, if we haven't gotten to all the questions and I know we haven't, I'm glad to have left you wanting more because I hope that means you'll be in touch. Uh, if not email uh, or follow us on uh, our newsletter or social media, there's some information up on the slide regarding that. Um, I also just wanna give a last plug for our help desk as a resource that's already kind of online available to say small municipalities, small businesses, um, others who are just starting to think about, okay, I need to use climate information to think about climate risk and opportunity. How do I do that? Where do I find it? Do I have the right information at hand? What do I pull from it that uh, can help me make a decision? We're, the help desk is there to do that. So I, it's, it's, it helps plug into sort of expertise that might not otherwise be in-house uh, at uh, different organizations. And so on behalf of um, Climate West and our partners, um, I want to just again say thank you and I maybe like end on that moment of hope that uh, it's an exciting time to be working in climate adaptation, just as Richard said, there's more and more attention to climate. And now um, it's a matter of helping uh, like people and organizations sort of figure out the what side of it. Um, and it's, uh, it's a journey and I, I think we're gonna be working a lot with others too. And I, I know there were some questions about um, collaboration. So yes, please reach out uh, to me or a member of our, of our partners and um, the conversation will continue. So stay tuned. Thank you.